Relax, we'll be fine. How can you be so sure? It's our annual review, right? We haven't even been on the air for two months. What's there to review? You're probably right. But something's bugging me, Janet. What's that, Sam? So we've been on the air six weeks, right? Uh Uh-huh. So? Well, we're already resorting to a clip show. It's bad, isn't it? Real bad. The boss is ready to see you now. Gulp. Work It is a satire program about jobs and working. Nothing in this program should be taken literally, figuratively, or metaphorically. It's just good fun. Yes, Boss Baby, it has been a big year for Work It. You want to review our material with us? No problem. So in episode one, we covered office romance. I did a scene about how this company, Zenefits, had a problem with its employees having sex in the stairwell and emailed them to stop it. Sure, we can listen to excerpts. Dear Zenefitisans, you probably know what this is about. Upper management recently discovered used condoms in the stairwell. This email is to inform all employees that they are not to have sex in the company's stairwell. But that's not all, is it? We also found a number of erotic creams, jellies, balms, salves, and otherwise sensuous unguents. 300 packets of birth control ranging in flavor from lemon drop to rocky road. There was even a pack of Flintstones chewable birth control, the ones with Pebbles Flintstone on the box with a red X over top. There was a Walter Cronkite real doll, a poster of Alien vs. Predator, and by versus I mean having sex with, a Nintendo Switch modded so that Kirby is anatomically correct, and a signed Wendell Clark jersey for some reason. To reiterate, employees are forbidden to have sex in the stairwell, and in case you try to get cute on us, no sex in the supply closet, boardroom, fridge, or ball pit either. Look, no one enjoys a good time like Zenefit's management. That's not gonna change. What is going to change, however, are the office romance policies. Don't make us say it a zen. As the office romance issues have persisted, we are now introducing rules against more innocent behavior. Male employees will no longer throw their jackets over puddles that a female colleague was about to step in. And female employees are absolutely not to kiss them on the cheek and say, my hero. It makes the men go awooga as smoke comes out of their ears. Not only is this distracting, it's a clear violation of the fire code. Under no circumstances are female employees to say, quote, I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her, unquote. In fact, all romantic film dialogue is now prohibited. Men are only allowed to say, I wish I knew how to quit you, if they are addressing their job itself. In which case, please put it in writing for our records, including your last day. This is your final warning. I mean, pretty good, right? Me? I did a fun little game show parody. It actually got some very positive feedback. Hello and welcome to Water Cooler Wipeout, where the nation's greatest gossips go head to head. I'm Francis Ferdinand, and today we've got the two blabbiest busybodies from Bailey and Sons Insurance. Please welcome Lorna from Accounting and John from the Mailroom. Anyone you want to say hello to? Hi, Mom. I'd like to say hi to my darling husband right here in the front row. Hi, sweetie. Isn't that lovely? John and Lorna, round one will be innuendo. I'll share tidbits of tasty tittle-tattle from your office, and I need you to finish my sentence with your most suggestive innuendo. Lorna, you're first. Ready? Ready, Francis. Herb and Human Resources arrived late three months ago because he was... Um, showing the intern you can't spell hard without HR? Correct! Ten points to Lorna. Your turn, John. During their extended tea breaks, Dave and Sam from IT like to... Um, tea bag... Uh, each other? Judges! Sorry, John, not euphemistic enough. Lorna for the steal! What about... Share their tea bags, Francis? Very good, Lorna. Ten more points! Ah, nuts. Congratulations, Lorna. That means you advance to the final round. Now, Lorna, you know the drill. Answer as many questions as you can in one minute. Three correct answers will win the grand prize. Ready, Lorna? I'm as nervous as our project manager when I found out about his love child. One minute on the clock and go. 
How many times have Cheryl and Max disappeared into the supply room this week? Six. Name everyone who has made lingering eye contact with Beth, the secretary, in the past two months. Uh, Chad, Charles, Mary, Eric, Enrique, 10 out of 12 careers, and one lost pizza guy. A half point for that, you left out the CEO, Mr. Robson. Oh, I thought that went without saying. Who is Mary's real baby daddy? It's not for me to speculate, but it looks a lot like Dave the maintenance guy. Correct! No mistaking that nose! Who did Lorna spend an awful lot of time with the week her husband was out of town? Ch I... Wait, that's me! I, uh... I have no idea what you're... Clock's ticking, Lorna. This is for all the marbles. I can't... Uh, it was John. <gasps> yes, John from the mailroom. My competitor on this very show. Lorna, how could you? Honey, I can explain. Cover the kids' ears. Lorna! John! Now that it's out in the open, I want to say I've always loved you. John, you're more than a torrid office romance to me. Let's run away together. Oh, Lorna. Uh, Lorna, we have Pete down here as the one you had an affair with. Oh. Oh, yeah, him too. Hey, Lorna. Pete, my darling. Love you, babe. Sorry, Lorna, you failed to win the coveted cubicle. But you did give your office lots to talk about on Monday. Well, that's all we have time for, folks. Tune in next week for Water Cooler Wipeout. How about that acting, though, eh? We're very sorry, boss baby. It won't happen again. Let's jump to episode two. Our second episode was all about job hunting. We understand, boss baby. We'll be job hunting if we don't improve. In our defense, boss baby, there was real improvement. I mean, take my fake movie trailer scene. Hey, Janet, did you see the new trailer? New trailer for what? Oh, great. You didn't either. There's a new trailer for this movie I really want to see. Is it about job hunting, Sam? Because we're in the middle of an episode and we don't really have time to goof off. Just watch. Coming next summer. The movie event that will take job hunting to bold new heights. See? Great. Shh. He's hunted bounties across the cosmos. He's captured legendary heroes and worked for the worst scum in the galaxy. And now, the legendary space vigilante faces his greatest test, changing careers. The newest film in the space fight saga, it's Bobble Fat Job Hunter. Oh wow, I love the space fight saga. So much better than that other space saga. For sure, way better and way less litigious. What is this place? Some kind of space lab. It looks like it hasn't been used in years. What do you think Bubble's going to do here? Oh man, this is so quiet. It's freaking me out. He's not seriously going to activate the power source, is he? Oh wow, did you see that? He's working on his cover letter. Proficient in many blasters. Well versed in Excel and in bounty hunting. Oh, awesome! A space battle! Who's he chasing there? It's a lightweight transporter. There are three passengers. Oh, snap! Those are his references! I was wondering if they'd be in this one. Tractor beam, nice. He's got them now. Oof, so long references. Should've watched out for that space debris. He looks really mad. Oh man, the effects on this swamp planet look great. Did you see that? Bobble fats in the corner in the reeds. He seems to be tracking something. This is probably the part where he's hunting for a job. <laughs> oh my god, there it is! It's an entry-level marketing job! Part-time, no benefits. And hundreds of flaming tentacles. <laughs> oh, he blasted it right in the head! I'm not sure if that means he got the job. That's why it's a trailer dummy. They can't just tell you. Oh yeah, duh. If you've ever wanted to see a movie about an alien pirate guy checking Workopolis, this is a pretty good movie for them. Good enough, anyway. Space Fights 106. Bilbo Fudge gets a job or whatever. Be there. Thanks for showing me that trailer, Sam. We are friends. 
Bounty hunter, job hunter, get it? What? Hack? Listen, pal, where do you get off to- Of course, boss baby. We're very sorry. But our third episode was all about leadership. Surely you'd approve of that. I mean, take Janet's scene about leadership boot camps. It was great. Uh, hi. I'm here for the leadership boot camp. Name? Lucy Ferens. Okay, Ferens, here's your business fatigues and low heels. This way for delousing. Wait, what? Hold still. All right, you maggots, listen up. Your college degrees and professional certifications mean nothing here. As of right now, I'm the chief executive officer of kicking your ass into shape. Is that clear? I said, is that clear? Sir, yes, yes, sir. sir. You? What a tiny little puke. Are you going to be a corporate leader one day? Sir, yes, sir. I wouldn't follow you to the break room for tea and cupcakes. Where are you from, anyway? Sir, Red Deer, sir. Red Deer? Only steers and failed careers come from Red Deer. You don't look like much of a steer to me, so that kind of narrows it down. Sir, yes, sir. Now get down and give me the 2018 Forbes list. Sir, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Bernard Arnold, and family. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. Leaning in is tired and old. Leaning in is tired and old. I don't know what people say. I don't know what people say. Empathetic leadership is here to stay. Empathetic leadership is here to stay. Move, 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 you maggots. Let's see you maintain that healthy work-life balance. Ferens, what in the hell do you think you're doing? Sir, I'm parenting, sir. You worthless sack of feces. You've missed three conference calls while changing this baby's diaper. Now go spend quality time with your spouse while simultaneously going over these reports. Sir, yes, sir. Ferens, what are you doing in here? Sarge wants us role-playing interpersonal conflicts. I can't take it anymore, Beasley. Ferens! What in the hell are you doing in the latrines? Synergize your team. Lead through actions. Promote continuous growth. You get out there and you further your job skills, Ferens. Now! I'm quitting and taking a part-time contract gig! No! This is as bad as if you shot me. Fun little full metal jacket parody, right, boss baby? (laughs) I'm sorry you feel that way. But how about Sam's clip? I did a parody of TED Talks. Oh man, we really goofed on those inane, self-satisfied, completely useless- Oh, of course, Sam didn't realize you invented the TED Talk, boss baby. Um, maybe we can skip this scene? No? Okay. Clips from our TED Talk. Management. Management. Right? Management. Right? Think again. Spearmint. Okay? Double mint. Mint chocolate chip. Now we're getting somewhere. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But what if you can? I've got a house. Nice little place. Let me tell you about my house. My water comes from lead pipes. My walls are painted with lead paint. Why would I do that? Why would I have lead pipes? Why would I use lead paint when I know I'll get lead poisoning? Because lead spells lead. Now, a team is a lot like a sports team. You've got your teammates, those are your coworkers, and there are probably lots of other similarities as well. What does it mean to lead? It's a great question, but don't ask me. Ask this photo of Jack Welch. From the beginning of time, man has asked the question, what is leadership? Even now to this day, we still wonder about leadership even in our modern age. That's what leadership means to me. What is leadership? Why ask us? You look at work it, you come to our talk, you pay us a fortune, why? I'll tell you, because we tell you exactly what you want to hear. In nature, cedars are leaders and flowers are followers. But in the end, leadership is like a cabbage, but also like a cool car. 
going vroom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What I meant to say was it's about how TED Talks are, uh, good? You're right, boss baby. He does owe you an apology. Which brings me to episode four, where we covered women in the workplace. I had a scene where Sam apologizes on behalf of all men. You want to hear him grovel, don't you? Um, so. Go on. Janet, do I really... Say it! But why? I'm not the one who... Listen, you little twerp! Ow, 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 fine! Good. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, just ladies, I guess. Sam has something he'd like to say on behalf of all men. We're sorry. There, can I go? Sorry for what? Sorry for making your working experience pretty awful, or at least worse than it needed to be. Go on. Ugh. We're sorry for the pay gap, biased hiring practices, asking awkward personal questions, taking away responsibilities, inadequate parental leave policies, the whole glass ceiling thing, obviously all that sexual harassment stuff. Including? Including, but certainly not limited to, Louis C.K., Harvey Weinstein, Casino Magnate, Steve Wynn, Uber's Travis Kalanick, 500 Startups co-founder Dave McClure, Howie Rubin of Charlie Rose, Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, Janet, do I have to apologize for all of these turds? There's hundreds of them. Okay, I'll let you off the hook. Oh, thank God. Now tell us how you'll do better. Seriously? It's not an apology if you don't change your behavior. But uh, I'm just one guy. Fine then, we don't accept your apology. Oh my god. Ow, 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 Okay, okay. In the future, we promise to, uh, not be jerks. And? Guys of the world, you better not make me look like a fool. Let's hear it. We promise to respect your bodily autonomy, your expertise, your life choices, your career choices, your professionalism, your superior fashion sense, your... We promise to stop calling you crazy when we're in fact in the wrong. We promise to stop calling ourselves feminist when we're in fact just a little bit less chauvinistic than others. We promise... Okay, we accept your apology. Really? Oh, thank God. It was a good apology. Not perfect. Okay. Uh, thanks. Now demonstrate how your behavior has changed. How? I don't know, but if you really meant it, you'd be making big changes right now. Do you... Do you want my apple? Hmm. Yes. Good start, what else? I'll start writing scenes exclusively for you. Keep it coming. Ow, 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 fine. We'll start listing your name first in the intro. You can sit in my chair. We'll More. change the name to Janet Presents Work It, featuring Janet. More! You get a raise. You're promoted! You're CEO of Work It Now! Yes. For Good life! More. I'll fire myself and live in a box! We're making you an astronaut! We took him down a peg, didn't we? But you'll have to admit, we've shown continuous improvement, boss baby. I mean, take episode 5 on first jobs. Surely you enjoyed my scene about working as a camp counselor. I'll never forget my first job. I was a camp counselor at Lake Blue Sky Summer Camp. Imagine me, a counselor. It's a time I'll never forget. Take the first day of camp. Ah, my first taste of freedom. You must be the new counselor. I am? I mean, I am. All right, fill out these forms. My pleasure. All right, name good, address, blah, blah, blah. All right, this is the important part. Power of attorney? Yeah, just in case. You know, probably won't need it. Okay, I've got a feeling this is going to be the best summer of my whole life. Just shut up and sign. For that one amazing summer, Lake Blue Sky was everything to me. I remember bonding with my fellow counselors, those connections, those shared moments. Boy, what a magical place! Magical? What are you, five? Yeah, what are you, a or something? Yeah, I'll never forget you guys either. And then there were the campers. Oh, the campers. Was I ever so young? Boy, we had some fun times. Even when the activities got a little spooky. You know, some people say, on nights like this, the old ghost can still be heard in these woods, crying out his dying words. Give me your money! N no, they were... I'm right behind you, remember? From the story? She's not playing. Give us your money. That's it. Pass me that log. Ow. Oh. Hey, cut it out. Use this flaming one. Ow. 
And in the end, I learned just as much from those kids as they did from me. Those days at Camp Blue Sky seemed like they'd last forever, but before you knew it, it was my last day. I still remember it. Wow, gang, can you believe it's the last day? Put the gag back on. Tie it tighter. <laughs> that should do it. Let's sacrifice this bitch to Ball. Yeah, let's spill his blood for Ball. That's the plan. Even though I was ritually sacrificed to Ball, I'll still always have a special place in my heart for Lake Blue Sky Summer Camp. My first and last summer job. Unacceptable, boss baby, I completely agree. I, on the other hand, produced a very fun scene that episode. I parodied old educational films. Here comes Sally after her first day of work. Golly, what a day! Did you enjoy work, Sally? I sure did. But gee whiz, am I tired. Well, get used to it. You're a grown-up now. Hello? Hi, Sally. It's Billy. Say, can I take you to the movies tonight? Root beer floats on me. I'm real sorry, Billy, but I've got to get my things ready for work tomorrow. Aw, rats. That's the spirit, Sally. Now that you're a grown-up, you have no time for childish distractions like a social life. Well, Jiminy Crickets. At least I'll get a nice big paycheck soon. Great news, Sally. Any plans for it? Well, once I've paid off my bills and bought groceries, I'll have just a little left over to enjoy myself with. Oh, but Sally, aren't you forgetting something? Oh, shucks. Savings. Well, I suppose I could... That's not all, Sally. Wait, what... what's happening? Feeling a little twinge in your mouth? A toothache? No! Don't do this to me! Oh, but surely you have dental benefits in your 29.5 hour a week quote-unquote part-time job. Please, no! I can't afford the dentist! Guess those groceries will have to wait, Sally. Oh, God, it hurts. <laughs> Get used to it, Sally. You're a grown-up now. I don't want to be an adult. Just make it stop. Oh, well, sure, of course there's room for improvement, but all things considered... You like cartoons, right, Boss Baby? Well, how about Janet's scene from episode 6? We were talking about work-life balance, right? So it's a scene about a superhero whose power is to say no to overbearing bosses. Oh my god! No, of course I didn't mean you, Boss Baby. I mean, uh, yes, I didn't mean you, Boss Baby. Great save, Moet. A typical office on a typical workday. But what's this? Okay, Hewitt, here's what I need you to do. You're gonna put in as many hours as it takes to get this report finished. I don't care how tired you are. We don't pay overtime here. It's all about the team. You got it? Uh, okay, boss. A worker in trouble. But who will save her from this demanding boss? Good, you're gonna eat here, sleep here, whatever it takes. I don't care if your kid's got a soccer game, your wife leaves you. None of that matters. It's all about the report. Oh, no. This looks like a job for... Stop right there, boss! Who in the heck are you? I'm... No Man! Help me, No Man! I'm powerless to refuse! This can't be! Boss, I have one thing to say to your unfair demands. No! Arg! No Man, you saved me from a weekend of misery! It's all in a healthy eight-hour day's work for... No man. Yes, no man's power to say no is the scourge of unreasonable employers everywhere. Where will no man's next adventure take him? Stay tuned. Welcome back to the adventures of no man. It looks like another overworked hireling is in trouble. Oh, hi, mom. Sweetie, listen. 
listen, I'm coming to visit this weekend. I want to check up on you. We can go see Uncle Merle while I'm there. And I can't wait to spend time with my baby. Look, work's been crazy. I really need a rest. You mean you don't want to see me? This looks like trouble. How could he possibly get out of this situation? Oh, of course I want to see you. It's just... Good. I'm going to take you shopping while I'm there, and we should paint your hideous living room, too. This looks like a job for... <laughs> It's no man. What? Are you having strange men over now? Who is that? Hand over the phone, citizen. Sure. Good evening, ma'am. I have something to say on your son's behalf. What's there to say? I'm coming over this weekend and that's that. No. What? No man, you saved my weekend. Enjoy your restorative break, citizen. I would never write a scene where bosses are the villain's boss, baby. Oh no? Well, what about your clip from that episode? See, in this scene, I was making fun of a president who is lazy, stupid, avoids work, eats junk food all day. I a close personal friend, you say? I agree. Let's review the scene. I hate you. Good morning, Thomas. They caught you posted at the door here, eh? Indeed they do, sir. I don't mind. Assistant to the president. Very impressive. Honestly, it's been a pleasure. Dealing with all the advisors is just so interesting. Discussing world conflict with the military secretary, theater with the culture secretary, or law with yourself. Fantastic. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have some documents for POTUS. Oh, I'm afraid it'll have to wait, sir. The president's on executive time. Right, right. Executive time. Uh, how long is the current block? Uh, let me check the schedule. Executive time, executive time. Lunch, more ET after lunch. Da, da, da. How's next Thursday for you? Say nine? Look alive, people. Morning, Dwight. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, Thomas. Now step aside. I've got an urgent matter to discuss with the president. I... Oh, don't tell me. Executive time. Damn it, Thomas, this is urgent. These Germans have redeclared sovereignty. I can slot you in three Thursdays from now. Nine? Morning, Thomas. Time to discuss the culture portfolio with... Oh, no, really? What do you think? This is really absurd. Here's what I can do. I'll bring up the calendar here on my tablet and... Oh, a voice memo. Welcome to the new age. We will conquer the world where the president is on executive time. Ho ho ho. Auf Wiedersehen. Hey folks, I'm the magician the president ordered and- Oh, you're kidding. Executive time. So I packed his favorite ribbons for nothing. Well, what's free? This year is filling up. How about next year? What time is good for you? Nine? A spy! Get him! Ach, du Lieber. You'll need a warrant, Dwight. Gosh, being the president must be a lot of work. Oh, hello. Yeah, three buckets of deep fried turkey parts. Go ahead, he's been expecting you. Boss baby, we promise to do better. Whatever it takes to stay on the air, we'll do it. A new format that's true crime meets relationship advice? And it's hosted by some lobotomized Obama staffers? You're right, boss baby. It's the perfect show. We won't let you down. We'll be back next week with our best episode yet. See you then. Psst. I shouldn't. He's a big influencer. Are you sure? Boss baby, are you kidding? Fine. Uh, boss baby, before we go, are you following us on social media? We're at Work It Pod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. An RT here or there could go a long way. Thank you for everything, boss baby. There's nothing we love so much as groveling for our livelihood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, so Thank you boss baby. Oh, you're so Do you love listening to CFMU, but don't know how to express that love? Radio may be an older invention, but that doesn't mean it's stuck in the past. Instead of yelling into the void, I like your show! show, show. You can just tweet us, or any of our shows, under their own hashtag, using hashtag CFMU underscore show name. Go give us a shout!